Welcome back to Fry Minis. I'm Eric, and today we're talking about customizing the world around your players. I think this is a pretty big consideration when you're running anything beyond just a one shot. Do the characters exist in a living world or does the world exist just to service the characters? Either way, you're going to want to do at least some integration over the course of a campaign. To help simplify the process, I've created an easy PDF available to my bronze and higher patrons. Uh, quickly gather crucial information from your players about their characters and how they would like to tie them to the world. Learn what kind of items they'd like to find which NPCs from their past they'd like to encounter, and more. How you use that information is up to you. Shout out to my patrons, The Spud Club, for their continued support. Are you interested in supporting the channel? Please consider becoming a patron for as little as $1 per month. So what does that question actually mean? Let's take a look first at characters existing in a living world. In this kind of scenario, the world is bigger than the characters. Events will happen with or without the characters. Uh, this naturally makes the party feel less powerful. This type of setting is great for stories that might span multiple campaigns, uh, homebrew worlds, or groups that want a more realistic feeling. You might present encounters, particularly random encounters, that are far outside of the group's power level. Uh, level 10 characters might be ambushed by half a dozen goblins because the party went near a goblin cave, uh, but they might also come under attack from an ancient red dragon uh, because they happen to be in his hunting grounds. This doesn't mean to use random monsters constantly, uh, but monsters that make logical in-world sense. The characters might also encounter loot that isn't usable by them. A party of a rogue, a cleric, and a wizard might come across a flame-tongued greatsword in the tomb of an ancient knight because that's what the ancient knight wielded. Just because nobody in the party is going to equip it, it doesn't become waste though. Uh, certainly a wealthy merchant would be interested in buying it, uh, an NPC ally could use it, or the characters could offer it to a local order of warriors uh, for favor. This world can be difficult to maintain, but can give some really rich story or character development opportunities. Maybe the king's castle is under attack, but the king tasks the characters to go rescue the captured prince. Uh, whomever the characters don't choose to save dies. The invading force isn't going to wait for the characters to complete one quest before continuing with their plan. Or if the characters keep doing side activities after they accept a quest to save a puppy, maybe someone else rescues that puppy and they lose out on the reward while earning a not so great reputation. I feel like this style of world is a little more popular right now as people are trying to make more elaborate games. Alternatively, maybe your players just want to play big damn heroes. Here, you'll customize almost everything to suit the characters. Monsters will almost always be around the same power level as the characters, loot will be directly relevant to them, and storylines generally don't progress unless the characters cause them to do so. This may sound like the lazy way to do things and maybe not the most engaging method to run a game. It's important to remember though that we're playing a game, a fantasy game at that, a lot of people play TTRPGs to be the hero, to be the center of attention, and to live out dreams of being powerful. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to want the characters to be the center of the world and follow a chosen one style storyline. I suspect this is probably the classic type of game that's the most common. So which is the right way to play D&D? I don't think there actually is a black and white answer. It all depends on how you and your friends like to play. Shocking revelation, I know. Personally, I prefer to run a living world with things occasionally weighted towards the character. That means peppering in character connections and desires throughout the game. Maybe the person that lost their puppy is a childhood friend of one of the characters. Or maybe that flame tongue greatsword isn't a greatsword, but it's actually just a flame tongue short sword so that Rogue could use it. The world is still happening, but we're strengthening our character's connections to it. We're making the characters a part of the world, and we can use that PDF to make it easy. I always recommend running a session zero, uh, an expectation setting pre-game opportunity to discuss key social and mechanical policies. One great thing to work through with your players is a wish list. Collect a list of story and character developments they'd like to see. Build a list of magical items they'd like to find. Compile feats and special abilities they'd like to earn. 
and then sprinkle those throughout the game. If you're rolling a treasure hoard, maybe include an item or two from that wish list. Uh, perhaps as a reward for a quest, the NPC could train someone in a feat instead of offering a gold reward. The player that wanted their character to be reunited with their lost sister, maybe the sister is actually the leader of the bandit group the party has been hired to disperse. Now, I wouldn't want to introduce their wish list fulfillments for every single encounter, uh, but the frequency can be fine-tuned by your group by trial and error. We are playing a game after all, and I like for the players to feel generally heroic in importance, but not necessarily godlike. I'd love to hear where y'all land on the spectrum in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.